Yu Yeon Cho from Agba Optical Networking. Uh, he will talk about secure collaborative learning for predictive maintenance in optical networks. So you, I already made you a co-host, so you can share your, yeah. Okay, okay thank you. Um, let's get started. Um, my name is Ju, and uh, today I'm going to present uh, secure my paper. <clears throat> oh, sorry, our paper secure collaborative learning for predictive maintenance in optical networks. And this is a uh, joint work with my colleague Kolut and also Stefan from the University of Kiel. I'm from uh, uh, Adwa Optical Networking located in Munich, Germany. Okay, so uh, optical networks are not not very well known in general, but it's, it, it has been used a lot uh, for critical infrastructure or even the residential access. And it's getting popular and popular because um, many people are required um, high bandwidth more and more. And then all the 5G networks, for example. And so let's let me give us one example. So let's think about the 5G networks and it, it is composed of multiple components and every component should work very well then 5G services are working. So in this case, the optical networks, uh, it, it's kind of in the backside, it delivers um, many uh, user data, aggregated user data and pipeline to the core networks. That's what optical networks is working. And then the question is how uh, can we estimate the risk of hardware failure? This, so this is one example uh, of network, network blackout in happened in Korea. So, uh, uh, so it's fire because of fire, uh, the, the optical network, optical fiber cables uh, were burned. And then there's services that, I don't know what's, I cannot see properly, okay. So uh, the mobile phone service, of course it, it didn't work for a short, short period. And restaurant, uh, uh, people couldn't pay the, uh, by, by card because EFT post didn't work and taxi, for example, didn't, didn't pay also by card. And supermarket same, ATM machine in the bank, also uh, it's somehow related to optical network. ATM didn't work, hospital couldn't exchange their um, the data, uh, online ordering like food delivery or so on didn't work. So optical networks is tightly related to our daily life. Okay, so how to evaluate the risk? Uh, so, uh, so, so far, the maintenance is more like a reactive maintenance. Here is when hardware fault occurs and then the replacement process begin. When the, now it's moved to the predictive maintenance. So in, before the hardware fault occurs, you estimate uh, the, 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 well, the product life cycle and the replacement is prepared in advance. So in the case, we can minimize the unplanned downtime of network and the outage of services. So that's why the machine learning comes to play in this area. So here is one uh, example of the PM uh, predictive maintenance in the cloud. It's actually Amazon launched a new service last year. It's called Monitron. So the bunch of the uh, sensors are attached to, to the machine and, and data is aggregated. And then so in this, in this process in the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the cloud, and then it's noticed to the user by app. So Amazon predicts this market, global market will be um, more than 13 billion in five years. So in general, it's, it's called, you can, uh, consider this as centralized machine learning, like data, all of data from the uh, data source uh, collected to the uh, cloud, a big giant uh, 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 companies, 
and they process uh, they trained uh, machine learning model and model is now deployed to the user so user can get also benefit also the server uh, big giant company also get uh, more benefits actually um, so but the thing is that there is data breaches so um, and also inside the thread uh, we cannot uh, uh, can, uh, uh, um, say ignore this threat and also data itself is uh, uploaded to the cloud is the it cost huge data communication cost and also legal issue because it it's not only our single countries it can be a aggregate from the multiple countries then it's um, have to uh, follow the the, the the privacy rules in in these countries, data own country. So that's why the federated learning comes comes in, and then it is a uh, very good idea to provide the privacy data privacy. So instead of the loading the uh, data itself, it's trained locally, and only the local trained local model is uploaded to the server to the server. And then later on, the global model is calculated and, and then is de deployed again to the data owner. So Google used this one uh, from 2017 as now uh, probably you, uh, you uh, know all this, this this learning very well. So it's getting popular. And the thing is that train, the machine learning model is now uh, uh, quite a uh, privacy preserving way. So data stays in data owner side, only uh, model is uploaded. And also by repeating, iterating this train rounds. So uh, the, this uh, global model is, is getting better and better. So that's why we also would like to try this federated learning uh, framework to for the predictive maintenance. I think this is the actually main con our contribution. We try to uh, uh, use machine learning uh, plus federated learning framework for predictive maintenance. So uh, say this is in the business, uh, in optical, not only optical networks, but business model. So vendors have their own data. Data means they uh, have aging test data. They have, don't have uh, the, uh, the big uh, field network. So they usually have a kind of uh, extreme uh, testing environment that they expect their uh, product life cycle, maybe two years, three years, or 10 years. But uh, in this in telecom network, actually they, would, they have field test data, but they don't have aging test data and they would like to know the risk of hardware failure. They just uh, not really care about individual, but they just want to have a risk of their network. So in, th in this case, vendor provide their aging test in privacy preserving way. And then this is processed in, in the central server and model deployed. And then, then um, later on, uh, the discrepancy between the local uh, model and the global model is reported to, to the vendors, also the manufacturers. That's our main idea. Uh, the, the things that not, not actually not, uh, not easy in practical, in practice, because data itself is, uh, the hardware failure is, is rare. So data is not, uh, not easy to, not much, enough to train the model or so, uh, so, and then uh, this aging test uh, itself is very expensive. And also this is uh, uh, quite confidential for the individual vendors. So uh, federal learning uh, is uh, so far seem to be a promising candidate. So uh, we can convince vendors to provide their uh, aging test to, to the, the network operator. And so um, the, still we have problem if we apply the federated learning because there is a model inversion attack. So even though uh, only a local model is unloaded, still from the local model, 
uh, there is a way to uh, to extract original data from like this. And also the poisoning attack is uh, someone, because it's a privacy preserving way, someone may uh, provide the incorrect uh, local model. And so the global model itself is also uh, not really correct. Okay, so that's why we secure aggregation is required uh, protocol. So let's have a simple example. It's actually uh, uh, the first proposed by uh, by Google in the paper. Let's say that they each uh, each each I say uh, data owner uh, sh shared one. They share a secret each other one and two. It is actually same. And one and three and three one same same and two or three and two and three same. In this case, uh, uh, they this local model is actually linearly masked by this uh, the sort of random number. And the thing is that this when the first index is smaller than uh, second index, then it's plus. Uh, or otherwise, it's minus. So I, you can see the idea. Then say same for the one three and three one. Then when when it's it's all aggregated, this one is cancelled each other, and then you can get um, only local uh, addition of local models. So simple idea. So this one, by this idea, uh, if if it's a large scale, but still is possible to collect the the global model in the efficiently. The only uh, the issue is if someone they drop out. So it's Google always think about the mobile phone environment. Some some network, uh, some phone uh, is not available or temporarily, for example, then you cannot get original um, the, the audition, uh, 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 aggregated data. That's why then you, there are some, some missing part. So that's why uh, uh, also they proposed the secret sharing uh, in advance. So when uh, this data can be uh, reconstructed by uh, collecting the secret share, then even though it's drop out, it's able to uh, reconstruct this missing part, missing linear masks, and then recover original uh, addition of the uh, addition of the local data, local models. Yeah. So okay, so. Uh, so this is uh, in scale. Uh, they it's a paper by Google. They proposed a secure uh, aggregation protocol, and I don't need to repeat this one. But just it's a it's large scale. They can cancel each other. So uh, we uh, have a little bit different approach. So we just apply uh, also the uh, linear mask here. So the vendor stay develop the local model, but they mask. Or, the, by this method, and then uh, and then also at the same time, they're using the the linear auditive, I would say, auditive uh, secret share scheme, and, and for they share this, they distribute their share to the other vendors. Then later on, uh, they add all the all the values in the server. They the uh, the edit, edit, uh, addition of the uh, masked uh, local uh, models are uh, actually the, these noise are canceled each other. And then we the server can get original uh, addition of the local models. So in this case, uh, server cannot see the, uh, the, the who, which uh, local models belong to which vendors, this idea. So we did some experiment. Uh, so this is a laser remaining useful uh, life LUL prediction. So before the uh, uh, failure occurs, we uh, would like to uh, predict in advance. And then this is called the LUL. So, so far uh, it's a physics based approach, but now we are going to try the data driven approach by machine learning. Uh, so let's skip some, we applied some other. So idea, so if you see 
uh, we compared uh, the uh, fastest learning or centralized model. Centralized is just collect all data in the in the server. This centralized means it's it's only uh, stay in the local model. So local model, of course, they are lack of the data set. So they have um, this error rate. They have a high error rate here. But in this in this case, uh, blue is centralized one, and then the pink is feather learning. They showed similar uh, uh, performance, and it's multiple uh, metrics. They showed even sometimes it's better in feather learning. So uh, this showed that feather learning scheme uh, is uh, is it, it would be uh, useful for the predictive maintenance and also performance is similar for the central centralized approach. So okay, so we demonstrate uh, the learning framework for the predictive maintenance, and also we showed performance is similar. And and feather learning is potentially vulnerable for the, the model poisoning attack even though we applied the sec uh, secret uh, aggregate protocol. So we need to apply the anomaly detection using machine learning. So this one would be uh, currently we are working on it and we are going to make, uh, 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 we're going to pre uh, publish soon. Okay, so this, is, this uh, work is uh, supported by the uh, INET Protect project. So I would like to introduce quickly our project. So because this is also relevant to, to the uh, Finland, uh, we are currently, INET project, INET protect, uh, INET, uh, project has a three uh, sub project. So we are currently working on this protect, uh, sorry. And also Antilas is, I think is no, uh, uh, based on the Finland and some other country, some other companies in multiple countries. And it's, I, will, I think it started the next year and also another uh, driven by the Ericsson. So it's a uh, uh, total budget is 70 million, it's, it's huge. And then protect is on 26.8 uh, million euros. So it's really good opportunity to develop uh, AI driven uh, network, uh, say uh, some tasks and also security. So uh, we hopefully we can uh, uh, outcome a, a lot of useful uh, the, the performance uh, project. Okay, the second uh, second uh, announcement is that uh, our first author Kolut is a currently a PhD student and and is almost finished his work. So he is looking for a postdoc position or industrial position. If anyone is interested in her, uh, hiring her, please contact her. Okay, thank you very much. That's all. Thanks a lot. Uh, so any questions? Right. Okay. So no questions. Um, one quick one from my side then. Uh, so, you know, I, I know that federated learning is quite hot nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't had this, the chance to work with it yet. Uh, so, you know, I just have looked some papers, like overlooked a bit, basically some papers. Uh, so, is federated learning basically related to MPC? I mean, in my, as I have it in my mind, is like in federated, federated learning, we have a distributed architecture. We have uh, several entities that they need to communicate with each other um, in a decentralized manner. And therefore, MPC would be a, you know, a perfect fit for this kind of stuff. So is this true or not? It is true, it is true. That's why it's uh, by nature, nature, but it's really relevant to the MPC. So uh, federal learning is uh, not only MPC. Um, so uh, many papers uh, are from, for, to combine the uh, DP, uh, differential privacy. So uh, easy to 
it's just it, this is more practical and easy to uh, uh, perform the uh, the privacy preferred way. But MPC is more like you know uh, MPC requires some uh, interaction between the, these entities, and sometimes entities are, are drop out as I mentioned. In this case, it's uh, difficult to uh, have a correct model if, because it's not, not some some entities are missing. Then sometimes this is difficult to have a correct uh, global model in the server. Of course, we can apply um, some uh, say. Uh, of course, we can apply the TN uh, threshold um, secret sharing scheme so simply, or um, we can apply the uh, complicated way. But uh, practically, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, very difficult to convince people who participate this kind of learning. So we, that's why we, uh, especially in industry, we try to focus on the very simple way people can understand, then, then they are willing to provide their data, even though it's local model, they are not willing to provide their data to the server. But if you are really a simple way and a clear way to show, then they understand. But APC is still uh, a bit complicated to explain or describe to the to the participants. That's so part of the problem. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. Any other questions? Right, so Jude, thanks a lot for the presentation. Uh, guys, we're gonna have a break for 10 minutes, so you at 12, right? Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you.